I made a mistake in recalling the events of 12 years ago. It did not take long to hear from some brave men and women in the air crews who were also in that desert. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. It's been an, an, an absolute privilege. It's been the, the, the honor of my professional life. And uh, I thank you for, for watching it, for hate watching it. Whatever reason <laughs> you were tuning in for, uh, it, you get in this business with the idea that maybe uh, uh, you have a point of view and, and something to express. And to receive uh, feedback from that is th the greatest feeling you can ask for. Uh, and I thank you. In the last decade or so, the way Americans get and understand their news has radically and permanently changed. The nightly news anchor is a breed on serious life support. The Internet is filled with wags and wonks who have no real credibility. And a good portion of the younger generation have been getting their news from a comedian-turned-news show host who at times told the truth much cleaner and much more in-your-face than standard news programs. Let us dig into the departure of two trusted sources of broadcast news. Welcome to Midpoint, the Assistant Professor of Mass Communications at Methodist University in North Carolina, former editor of Broadcasting and Cable Magazine, and an award-winning journalist in his own right. Dan Trigoboff joins us today. Dan, thanks for being here. Nice to see you, Ed, although I don't see you. That's quite all right. It's okay. We see each other still in the, in the metaphorical sense here in, in broadcast <laughs> world. What does this say? I just said two trusted sources of news. For so many years, it was the nightly news anchor that was always trusted, the Cronkite era, the Brokaw era, so many others. But to say that Jon Stewart is a trusted source of news has to tell us something about where the news has gone and where the public wants the news to go, does it not? Yeah, I would uh, I would caution people to think of John Stewart as a news person, and he would caution you. But uh, if you remember his takedown in early two thousand nine of Jim Cramer and the financial news on television, it was pretty effective, and I think it was done in a way that journalists themselves would be proud of, and frankly should have. Uh, but at the same time, John Stewart would tell you he's a comedian, he's an entertainer. The Brian Williams story, though, is is uh, a real cautionary tale. I I teach. Uh, I hope future young journalists and I tell them frequently that reputation and credibility are built over a lifetime but they can be lost in an instant and we've seen Brian Williams in such a short time go from a trusted source to kind of a, a, an internet meme and a joke I'm sure you've seen some of the Forrest Gump mm -hmm. uh, selling placements of Brian and um, again the, probably arguably the best paid um, and uh, most important uh, newsman in terms of communicating with people. Dan, isn't it fair to say, though, that the line has been blurred here because you would have a newscaster who would come on and who would deliver the news, but now, thanks to the 24-7 cable era, the Internet era, we are filled with opinionators, commentators, people who are not real journalists in many sense of the word. These are people who are out there to say things that incite people, that get hits, that get ratings, that make money. Their job is not really to tell the truth in many ways, correct? Oh, you're absolutely right. But it's been a long time since uh, new, you know, since the days of Edward R. Murrow and Walter Cronkite. Um, TV crossed the line into entertainment a long time ago. Uh, Roger Ailes, who programs Fox News, came out of politics and he understood that combat makes for good television. Jon Stewart and The Daily Show on Comedy Central understand that humor makes for good television. Both are news-oriented. But um, it always troubled me when people said they got their news from Jon Stewart and The Daily Show. Uh, that says that TV news has become a joke, and now it's a funny one. Some are suggesting Jon Stewart take Brian Williams' job, which, uh, again, to me, is, is laughable, but for the reality uh, that television news is very entertainment-oriented already. I think what you said is real good in there when you talk about combat, and combat does indeed make good TV. Look, I'm going to be very honest. When it comes to interviewing somebody here, it is verbal combat. You want to get your questions in there. You want to make sure that your questions, though, create a point and make somebody say something back to you. But is it not fair to say that what Williams has done here and what's happened to him may now make a lot of people sitting in chairs like these make sure that they're factual for a change? Maybe it'll actually bring some real fact-checking back to the individuals, knowing that if they lie, they may get caught sooner or later and lose their job. Well, we've had these things before. There were, in fact, hoaxes and false re reporting. So if that didn't teach the lesson, I'm not sure that this will. This is a little bit different, though, because here Brian is talking not about stories 
Well, he's talking about the process of reporting more so than the news itself. So uh, if, if we're always going to tell big fish stories, maybe we better make sure we're getting the measurement of the fish before we give it. Uh, th that's what really happened here. Brian sort of padded his personal resume rather than, uh, uh, I don't, well, of course, they're saying now that, he, that a combination of that might have been exaggerated in the Katrina story, that mm -hmm. he may have claimed to have seen things that he didn't actually see. So there, there is a blurring of the lines, and part of that is the star system that we have. Brian was a star. Brian went on Letterman. Brian went on morning TV. Brian's very funny. But was that really part of the problem there, Dan, is that here's a serious news guy, and he's allowing himself to be mocked, to be made fun of, and being part of the joke. Didn't that really cross the line and make him less of a news journalist and more of an entertainer? Not before this. I think before this he was still taken seriously. Now uh, NBC and Brian himself recognize that it's going to be more difficult for him to be taken seriously. But I, th I think his likability was, was a factor in his popularity. Now we can argue about uh, the effectiveness and, and, and the benefits of that, that maybe news anchors should simply be recognized as readers and not stars. And Brian, again, attractive, engaging, uh, good-natured, funny. But maybe none of that really matters because what we really want to pay for, the $10 million a year that Brian was getting, is good reporters and producers who give us good, solid, factual information in context so that we can be a better informed democracy. That's, again, that's what I teach, and sometimes I wonder if I'm being realistic. Dan, i got less than a minute left here. What does it tell us, then, that a generation has now been raised on John Stewart, that 18-35 to 35 bracket, they saw him as their trusted source of news. What is that going to force current news agencies to do in order to change and keep them as they get older? Well, uh, the Brian Williams story and, I guess, the John Stewart story is sort of working in opposite directions. You've got one, uh, one part of that tale says news needs to be more entertaining. The other part says maybe news needs to be more serious. Uh, my fear is that it's going to um, end with the former, that news will become ever more entertaining and ever less serious. Uh, it, it, I wonder how people even got the jokes if they went into watching The Daily Show uninformed, and maybe they were just laughing on command. So people who are getting their news from Jon Stewart, I don't see how they could be getting the jokes. I've never taken that too seriously. I suspect that most young people are people watching the show which just really aren't getting the news, and that's the sad part. All right, you can entertain, but still check the facts. It's still the most important thing in what we do. Dan, a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks it's so pleasure. much. Thank you. All right, take care. It is the looming Supreme Court decision on Obamacare that some believe the GOP is hoping will save the plan. Don't be confused. We'll make sense of it all when we have the facts next on Midpoint.